Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Bumi and today we are watching Animals in Space, A Brief History by Samonella. Yes, um, I don't actually know what, well, what animals have been into space. Um, the only thing that I can be assured of is uh, a monkey or was it an orangutan? Aside from that, I have no idea what animals they have brought into space. Um, I seen the video about about the cat that they took on the plane uh, that induces zero G. Um, you know the plane goes like to basically like simulate zero gravity. I've seen the the video of cats going on that, but aside from that nothing else so i'm excited to learn more about it so remember if you like my reactions don't forget to leave a like let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comments section below and consider subscribing we are trying to get to a thousand subs this year so hopefully you guys can help me out on that also don't forget to leave your suggestions on what i should check on next that being said let's go ahead and watch the video <music> Hey kids, animal test subjects have always been an important facet of science, since they allow us to study physiology in more destructive ways than we could get away with on humans. So it should come as no surprise that, over the years, there's been a lot of creatures haphazardly thrown at the cosmos against their will. Here's a bunch of smelly animals that achieved more in their short lives than you ever will. Quick disclaimer, this is by no means a comprehensive oh, list, not man. even close, we'd be here all day if it was. More so just a highlight reel of the ones I found the most interesting. So the Great Zoo in the Sky was first founded in 1947 when the U.S. launched a craft containing a bunch of fruit flies 68 miles into the air in order Ooh, to see what okay. kind of horrible mutants would get made from all the cosmic radiation up there. Unfortunately, <laughs> they were totally fine, so the Earth was like, hey, living things can go into space and not die instantly, supple. And the next year, they decided to send up a rhesus macaque named Alan, ah, macaque. which it seems kind of like jumping the gun to go from barely alive specs to basically a person in one step. If it were me, I would have thrown like a frog or a gerbil in between there, but whatever, I'm no cosmopolitan. Anyway, Albert died uh, of suffocation on the way up and never really made it to space alive. Fun fact, damn. this rocket was actually a V-2 missile stolen from the Germans after World War II. So just in case any of you have any sympathy for those Nazi characters, they're technically responsible for the death of a poor innocent space monkey. Pretty condemning, if you ask me. But I guess the U.S. <laughs> felt pretty bad about it, so they decided to deal with their grief by naming the next monkey Albert II. Pretty unhealthy coping mechanism yep. according to my shrink, but she also thinks Punk is dead, so what does she know? This Albert actually made it into space alive through a grand effort incorporating all the incredible cutting-edge technology that the Atomic Era had to offer. And after all that... They goofed on the parachute, so Albert II turned into a <sighs> fine red mist on impact, which just goes to prove the age-old damage. You can lead a monkey to space, but you can't make him land. There were a few more Alberts <laughs> after this. Albert III fucking exploded. Ooh. Albert IV made it up, but he had another tissue paper parachute what don't work for heck, so he's out. Albert yeah. V, yet again, bad shoot, liquefied on impact, until finally, in 1951, on Albert number 6, they figured out how to make a big blanket that consistently <laughs> makes you not immediately die when you fall from the sky. Uh. And the monkey was recovered alive from the capsule, alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, still counts. Earlier that <laughs> same year, Russia launched two little pupniks named Tsigan and Dizik, both of whom came back unharmed. These two were the first vertebrates to ever leave Earth and come back alive. Then in 57, the Reds snagged another achievement by putting the first living thing into orbit. Besides the bacteria clinging to Sputnik 1, but they're losers, <laughs> we don't talk about them. Specifically, they launched one brave and daring dog from the streets of Moscow, probably the most famous animal to ever go into space. You know its name well. That dog is, of course, Airbud. Unlike those other guys we talked about, I don't know who that is. Plan to be recovered intact since we ah, Laika, yeah, sounds familiar. Let alone bring it back. But they still wanted to make sure she stayed alive long enough to at least reach space. So before the mission, they put her through the most rigorous canine space camp that Russia had to offer, throwing her in a centrifuge for a while to get her used to G force, <laughs> making her cage progressively uh. smaller to get her used to cramped spaces, which made her just not shit anymore at all. But that's a different story. They also switched her diet. 
to a special <laughs> high nutrition gel that she would have eaten after takeoff, you know, had her brain not crapped out from overheating within the first few hours. In 59, the US strapped two monkeys to the nose cone of a Jupiter missile and actually got them back alive afterwards, which is crazy mostly because these things withstood 38 G's of acceleration. For context, Whoa. that's the force that makes even trained pilots lose consciousness yeah. times four, or this thing times 12, or roughly the same forced experience when you realize that's not a normal speed bump, but one of those evil tiny ones that ruin your life, you know the ones. Well, that's what you get for doing 25 near a hospital yeah, setting. Well, hey, good thing I'm already here considering the ballistics test that just went down between the roof of my car and my freaking skull. Hey guys, I'm so sorry to interrupt your action. I just want to let you know that if you're enjoying what you're watching, I would like to ask you to please leave a like, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section below, and consider subscribing. We are trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year, and we are one fourth of the way there. So hopefully, you guys can help me out on that. And that's it. Back to the reaction. Jesus. So in '61, we graduated some repressed from anger right there. Sending up a chimpanzee named Ham. Remember Space Jams? Yeah, it was that. Frame for frame. Andy Samberg and all. What's special about Ham is that he was actually trained to pull levers and slap buttons while up in the ship, being rewarded banana pellets for completing tasks and getting his feet tased whenever he messed up. Sounds like a cartoon, I know, but I Oof. promise it's for real. Meanwhile, the Soviets were busy putting a big, bald, smart ape into orbit. No big deal. <laughs> France saw the US and Russia sending up monkeys and dogs and felt left out, so in 63, they launched a cat into space and were like, yeah, that's cool and unique. I'm one of the popular kids now. In 68, the Soviets saw the rabbit making rice cakes on the moon and said, hmm, how about a tortoise for that hair? Launching two of them into deep space, <laughs> all the way around the moon and back to Earth, where they were recovered alive oh, after man. their capsule landed in the ocean. Kind of cheating when you are your own crash suit, but an impressive Yeah, thing that's true. In 73, that we is mummy true. chogs in space. What's a mummy chog? It's one of these things. Like a fish, but real rough and tumble. Tolerates low oxygen, weird pressure, high salinity, dishwasher safe, energy star rated, you name it, sister. <laughs> At first, they could only swim in circles, but after a couple weeks, oh, they actually adapted to zero g and figured out how to maneuver properly even more interesting we also brought mummy chog eggs and when these hatched the little mummy choglets knew how to swim in zero g immediately mummy chagas, so why does that name remind me so much of jimmy chagas Oh, that same I need to watch that boy again. Spiders who managed to spin some webs. Trash webs, mind you, but hey, they managed. In 78, The Muppet Show aired Pigs in Space for the first time. In 85, <laughs> we cut off the arms of a bunch of newts and sent them up to see if they grow back the same way. The reasoning behind no. this being is a newt can't grow stuff back then, an astronaut with a paper cut probably can't either. Fortunately, they rearmed themselves at the normal rate. So rearmed themselves? Around the same time, NASA actually had talks with Sesame Street about sending Big Bird up on on the space shuttle what as a publicity the stunt. fuck this is, is real. that the plan ultimately fell through after they realized big bird is fucking giant and unwieldy at all times literally the worst possible choice for a celebrity cameo on a space shuttle so instead wow. they sent a school teacher in his place and then the challenger fucking exploded let me reiterate there is a timeline not too far from this one where yeah. Big Bird is a casualty in the single worst astronautical disaster in history. A yeah. tiny evil part of me almost wishes that happened. Like, that's just so indescribably absurd. In the early 90s, we... Yeah, let's not just talk about the school teacher that replaced Big Bird that lost his or her life. I mean, sure. <laughs> let's try to kill Big Bird. <laughs> Set up some baby jellyfish to grow up in space just for laughs. They figured out how to maneuver just fine, but when we brought them back down, they literally didn't have a concept of gravity and couldn't orient themselves properly in their new environment. Which, being a jellyfish is the easiest thing there is. You just kind of exist, maybe squirm a little now and then. So when you manage to somehow mess that up, you know things have gone seriously wrong. In 2003, the US sent up a bunch of invertebrates, including silkworms, spiders, carpenter bees, and harvester ants. Whoops, they exploded. In 07, some tardigrades went up, totally exposed to the vacuum of space for 10 days, which, surprise, surprise, they were fine. On that yeah. same mission, a cockroach gave birth, creating the first organism that we know of to ever have been conceived outside of Earth. And finally, <laughs> in 2018, Elon Musk sent a big basket of mice to the International Space Station. Just, you know, because he can. So those are just oh, a handful no. of God's creatures. <laughs> the pixelated version the looks so creepy. Up from down. If you're like uh, me, you're probably a little jealous. Why does an ugly ape get to go into space, but I don't? I wish to bear witness to the music of the spheres <laughs> firsthand in a way that a lower creature could never appreciate. You know why you feel like that? Because you're a nerd. And what better way to fill that space-shaped space in your shriveled nerd heart than a vast collection of high-quality documentaries? That's why you need to try Curiosity, Curiosity Street. Yeah, Curiosity I thought so. Street. 
Alright, let's skip that. That was really good. That was good. There are a lot more animals that went up there than I imagined. I mean, I don't really know why I didn't think that would happen, but still. I only knew of the monkey, and uh, Laika's name is very uh, familiar. But I never really equated that to, to a dog in space. Like, yeah. It's <laughs> the the fish experiments are what um, how to call this what's most intriguing to me simply because they are already well of course they experience gravity but when you're in water you're kind of almost already in zero g ish right so. It wasn't surprising that it didn't take a while for them to uh, adapt to the environment and yeah. <laughs> Overall it's just good. The humor is good. The, the animation is so funny. I'm never gonna get the big bird out of my head now. But that's gonna be it for me today guys. Link to my Twitter is down in the description below. Go to check it out if you want to and if you're new here and enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Again, we are trying to get to a thousand subs this year, so hopefully you guys can help me out with that. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check out next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!